that's right on. Now, go ahead. Let's see this fly you want to tie, Well, Willie. we're going to tie it on. We have a Dairiki, and it's a, a number six, and it's a 4X long. Mm -hmm. I've got a, a, a gold bead on here. And the biggest thing with these flies is you want them a little bit heavy so they'll get down. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, and you want them to get down because you're casting to feeding fish, isn't that right? Feeding fish. They're tailing. That means they have their 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 tail up. Their head down and, and their, their tail up. up. They're, they're, they're scooping in the mud. Yep. They got those big sucker, sucker <laughs> lips for a reason. Yeah. So we're going to uh, use dubbing to make the body on this. That's and Antron dubbing is... is, is Pretty good dubbing. We we like it. It's 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 an old standard. Uh, you know, if you know any any old fly tires, they used to take old carpet and that's, chop it up in a coffee. That's grinder. exactly what my dad did. He would take um, carpet remnants and he'd put it in a car, uh, coffee grinder. Yep. Chop it all up, and that would be his dubbing. Now you saw that uh, while David was talking there, I was kind of wetting the string. This kind of takes the tension out of it and makes the dubbing go on the on, on the thread a little bit better. I said string. It's thread. Hardcore now you um, are, Now you uh, I'm talking about about Murphy today. You know, any other day I'd be able to dub this without a problem. Um, now when you dub that, Willie, can you put the dubbing for the full length of the flyer, do you have to put a little dubbing and then wrap it on and then more dubbing and wrap it? I, I kind of like to do it this way because this way you can control the, the, the size of the body. Okay. Uh, and I, we're not making a real heavy body. If we were making a real heavy body, I'd use a dubbing loop. But we don't need, a, need that much on here. So we're going to... So you just keep adding it as you need it to yeah. get to the point where it's... Time to tie it off. Time to tie it off, exactly. And go to step two, or step three. One thing about um, fishing for carp, if you see carp that are just swimming around, they look like they're feeding, forget it. They are never. They're not feeding. The only fish you're going to catch when you're out carping, unless you happen to snag one, is <laughs> those that have their head right down in the mud and they're feeding. That's so, right. Absolutely true. It's okay. a lot like bone fishing. It's very much like bone fishing. And that's the excitement of it, because you have to stock these fish. Mm -hmm. And and you're in a, in shallow water. It's almost like fishing on a flat. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, really, really, uh, it's interesting fishing. I got a feeling this is going to be the next big wave in fly fishing. I think so. There's so many lakes. I mean, here in Washington, eastern Washington, that whole Lenore chain has carp. It's full of them. Full of them. So what I do is I'm going to take my... Um, my uh, uh, what is damsel fly material? These are the legs, and and I'm gonna fold it in half, and a tie. A set here. And cut it to length, which is about the bend of the hook or so. Then I'm gonna take and turn my vise over. Do it again. On the other side, it's nice about a rotary vise is because you, you, you can make sure that you get it on the side and even with the other side. So you, often, uh, you know, you get one side perfect and that you can see really well, and the other side's kind of lo loppy loopy. Yeah, a little off. Yeah. I just right. made that word up, loppy loopy. Yeah. I know Derek sells these flies at Bay Street Outfit, or these uh, Danforth vices at Bay Street Outfitters. And they're great little vices yep. for the money. You just can't beat them. Can't beat it. So now I'm going to take and get me a hackle. And, and you kind of tie this kind of across between a soft hackle and, a, and a, a dry fly. I like it to be kind of up, but at the same time, I like the fibers that I use to be rather soft. So that's why I go back here into the back side of the neck. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to prepare my feather here, tie it in, and then I'm going to, I'm just going to tie it up, tie it off. Okay. So now I'm going to take the rotary vise. Wrap me some feather around here. You can do a little too much with that, can't you? 
or can you? Can you put too much hackle on? It depends. Uh, if you know, if you want it to sink really fast, and you got a, a, a dry fly hackle, um, then yeah, it can it can mess things up. Um, you you want it to have some body, but at the same time, you don't want too much. You know, I'm going to kind of tie this back just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, when we fish these, we were fishing them with a little scent on it. Mm -hmm. um, carp are tough, tough bird to catch, and so anything that we can we can do to better it, give us better chance. That's what we do. And there you go. There we go. Good job. So this will catch fish. The other thing is, though, is we experienced when we were fishing them oh. that there was a damsel fly nymph. And all of a sudden these stopped working and we couldn't figure it out. So what we did is we, we, yep, we tied switched. on a damsel Actually, nymph. Actually, the blue damsel nymph and it started yep. catching fish. So. Started catching yep. fish. So pay attention to uh, the hatch out there. Again, even in carp, watch what's going on in the water. Well, David, let's go back and uh, show a couple more clips. Okay. These, these are some fun ones and there's one double in it. So. Uh, wasn't your prom date in this one? My prom date's in this one. <laughs> Joe's picked me out a prom date, so, so we'll see you on the backside. <laughs> Let's go fishing. Mm -hmm.